<laughs> That's not from this John. Good. Arden good. doesn't even have shoes. Hell no, I'm comfortable, man. I'm petting my dog with my foot and everything. All right, welcome everyone back to the Aesthetic Agenda. Rediscover Aesthetics Unplugged. And this one is going to be very unplugged. We're just going to talk about ourselves a little bit. And I understand that a lot of you guys don't know who we are. And a lot of you, especially with Amber being so new, I feel bad, Amber, because we never really had a party. I wanted to like announce you to the world and have a a big old thing. Birthing party here. Right, right. And we never got to do that. So we're going to use this as a, um, a portion of get to know us. Um, yeah, and, and go from there. So I'll start. I'm Arden. Nice to meet everyone. I am a physician assistant and athletic trainer of 15 years. I'll be 40 next week. And um, I'm married to this lovely lady here. We got three kids. Um, and yeah, I'm born and raised in New Orleans and snuck away for a little while and then came right back. Who are you, lovely lady? Catherine. I'm a registered nurse. And yes, Arden is my husband. So pray for me. Um, this the one girl. <laughs> we're very opposite, <laughs> which works for us. At times it can be frustrating, but 90% of the time it works. Um, mainly because you love doing what I hate and vice versa. Fact. She loves doing what we both hate and that's computer work. So yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, okay. So top three things. Hold on. You're forgetting about it. I'm sorry. What the heck? You said your three things. Yes. I feel like you kind of gave your a whole biography. Because I'm good at talking. And I'm not, which is one of the three things you should know about me. <laughs> She's getting so much. She really is. Very proud of her. Amber, why don't you introduce yourself to the to the party here? Marley would like to introduce her rear end to the party. Yeah, she got a big butt. Her bet that's so. Feeling Catherine's spotlight. So I'm Amber. I worked as a nurse for probably like eight years. I did a lot of critical care. Um, did NICU for four years, ER medicine for going on five, still doing it. So crazy. So I'm working two jobs. I'm not ready to let that life go yet. So you're an He's adrenaline junkie. Yes, I really am. Um, and now I'm MP. I've been MP for about two years. Mm -hmm. Um, These lovely people, you know, picked me up. I couldn't be happier with my decision to work for them, with them. Best decision we ever made. We're happy to have you. I, know. I feel like their <laughs> child that just got brought in. Sometimes I have to act as their mediator, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not as often as you would think for a husband and wife. Stay team. out of it. I'm just like, oh, you know, they're married. But then when you leave, she's like, I totally agree with you. Oh, I was going to Well, guess what? When you leave, she tells me the same thing. No, she doesn't. <laughs> No, this one, she probably, he probably like me to sit oh, there. <laughs> See what I put up with? She handles my money. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. You don't, just, you don't mess with the money, man. <laughs> right. Remember that. Um, But I couldn't be glad. I mean, happier to be here. I love aesthetics. I've, ever since my first treatment, I knew this is what I wanted to do. And I just love making people, like, feel better about themselves, give them that confidence again. Um, Just a very blunt but caring individual. I will I love it. be just like it is with no filter attached. Um, so, I'm type of one type of type person, either love or hate. But I'm also very loved. I won't say yeah, it. no, I, it's a polite blunt. Yeah, it really is. is. Which you really need to have in this industry because so many people have unrealistic expectations, or they think one syringe of filler is gonna like correct the five issues that they have with their face in all these different areas, and it's like that's. That's not how it works. Yeah, and I'm not afraid to tell you no either. Yeah, so, you know, we're we're very caring in how we say it, but sometimes you do have to be more blunt with some people than you do with others. 100%. Yeah. So. I like to be blunt with people. I probably... I mean, look at the background I have. I mean, it was just like a live or die. I mean, sorry. Okay. That's right. That's right. What, um, we'll start with Amber and work our way back over here. Amber, what was it? I know you alluded to this a little bit, but what was the deciding factor for you to say, okay, I want my career to be in aesthetics and wellness medicine? So I really, I, I never really liked the whole corporate medicine field, um, the way it was going, especially after COVID. Um, I really saw how, what meant the most in the healthcare. Um, it wasn't the people, it wasn't the care being delivered. Um, it was how much, how fast, um, and I just, it got, I got burned out. Like I really did. Um, as much as I love emergency medicine, I love the adrenaline. I love 
you know, that something new every day. I completely got burnt out. I was like, I don't feel like I'm making a difference anymore. I don't feel like I'm in the, like, this is not what I got into nursing for. Um, I got into nursing to, you know, care, make things better. And I officially, I'm like, I, I'm like a robot. My hands are tied. I can't practice medicine the way I want to practice medicine. I want, and honestly, like I said, coming from the ER too, I wanted to make, I saw how much overuse the ER get. Mm -hmm. People use it for their primary care, their urgent care, their, and it takes away from the actual emergencies. And I got this overwhelming, I guess, feeling of wanting to like, hey, I can make a difference in people's lives. But if I went into like, hey, um, this is how you make yourself better. Like if you take care of yourself, you don't have to come here. Um, it's not about pushing meds. It's if you, you know, ate better or exercise one to two times a week is better than nothing. You know, you wouldn't be on this blood pressure medicine. You wouldn't be on this. And it's all about like accountability, holding these people accountable for their actions, their health, their, you know, future. Um, I see so many people all day long. They're, they got a med list as long as I can, you know, for sure. Yeah. And they don't even know what they're taking. They have no clue. They just, oh, the doctor told me. And I'm like, well, did you, I mean, is it helping you? No. Well, because you haven't changed anything about your lifestyle. Um, so you just feel worse by adding on the meds when you really think they're helping. Everybody thinks there's a medication to fix everything, and there's really not. And it all just starts with that person. And that's where I really liked wellness medicine. I really liked, you know, the hormone aspect. The you, you, you It starts with you. You make yourself feel better. Um, there's no doctor that's going to fix you. There's no miracle. If you take the accountability for yourself, then you really, really will see a difference in your health, your, you know, Amen. longevity of life. I mean, everything. This is the way you, and that's just really one, what I wanted to do. I wanted to make that change and actually feel like I'm making a difference versus you know, just pushing meds or, you know, having someone hold my hand and tell me what to do. Or Amen. Freedom. I love it. Yep. Catherine, what about you? So I got into aesthetic medicine because, <laughs> don't laugh at me. Like, we'll know the truth, but we'll keep it right. Right. Um, Similar to what Amber said, it. Corporate medicine is not about the patient anymore. It's not about making them um, live better and feel better. It's how much money can we make off of them and how fast can we get them out of the hospital. So, Amber, um, in recent years, have you noticed that rehospitalization rates have just, like, skyrocketed? Oh, yeah. like Which, in a way, I don't understand because a hospital will get penalized. If a patient is readmitted within like 24 hours. And it's, but they are back to patient education. Yeah. Like no one is educated. If you hand, I found more and more like I, I strive on patient education. Like that's just my big thing. Um, You can hand me a piece of paper all day long. I'm not going to read it. That's going to be I, just like I go to the doctor and I throw it in my sad seat, you know, like in my passenger seat. That's the same what they do. They don't know to follow up with this doctor on this date. You can tell them, you can write on the piece of paper. I cannot tell you how many people come back to the ER and they're like, Hey, I thought I was supposed to come here for my follow-up. I'm like, this is the emergency. Right. And I see a lot of discharges. Take care of themselves. Yeah. And I see a lot of patients being discharged before they need to. Like, they're not really healthy. Again, and yeah. It was full. Or yeah. And, and so they go home and then they're right back because they still have fluid on their lungs or whatever the case may be. And it's not a surprise to us on the floor. But for some reason, it's a surprise to the insurance. Oh, well, and there's, that's a whole nother end up hospital. But it's like, you're, you're not, you're not doing anything. You got to see it from a very unique perspective working in case management. Because... Which is another thing. Like so many things fall through the cracks that shouldn't. And it's, but it's because a lot of case managers are overworked. They have too many things to coordinate and take care of. And they can't sit there and make a hundred plus people's follow-up appointments. Although you should. Or it's your job. And another thing I see too, like people think they need to be seen tomorrow with their follow-up appointment whereas a lot of these consultation like doctors or specialty doctors they're not going to get seen for like three or four months out unless it's an emergency and they're like well i can't wait that long so they show back up in the er multiple exactly. times and multiple times and multiple times and like it's just an ongoing like failure in the system and it's a vicious cycle it is it is it's so, frustrating now so. we're here yeah I mean, my story is is quite similar to all of you guys um i graduated from pa school in 2010 well, let me back up i was a uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And I kind of fell upon athletic training um, as a backup plan because all I wanted to do when I was growing up was race motorcycles. I wanted to be a dirt bike racer. And 
I grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s when, you know, the freestyle motocross stuff and the X Games, I was all big. And here I am in central southeast Louisiana, as far away from that stuff as possible. But I had this pipe dream that that's what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to work in extreme sports. And I realized quickly that that wasn't going to happen. So I was like, well, what's a fallback? And I was like, well, medicine sounds like a good fallback plan. So I found extreme sports. Well, correct. And so I found athletic training and I got to merge the two and I had a very good promising career, except that I was making zero money. Athletic trainers make nothing. Um, I, I had a very satisfied life. I was, I was very happy as an athletic trainer, but I couldn't move out of my mother's house. So my boss at the time was a physician assistant. I hadn't heard of it before. And I started looking into it. And about a week later, I was like, all right, I'll be a PA. Literally, it was that quick. And the next year I got into a great school. I moved went to school. I said, okay, well, I'm just going to merge all of these things together and make one big happy life for myself. And I was never able to do that. Um, and because of the reasons that all of y'all mentioned, right, I, I got out and worked orthopedics for the first six or seven years of my career. And the, the lifestyle that, that is orthopedic surgery in today's Western medicine culture is, um, really not sustainable. Um, all of medicine really, I mean, that's why you're seeing providers burn out left and right. That's why you're seeing nurses having to be recruited from other countries because nobody wants to do the work. It's far too demanding on one's, um, personal, uh, capacity, uh, and people just, they get dumped on a lot. Right. So I went from job to job. Uh, I think the longest tenure job I had was two and a half years, maybe three years with one company. And I was always looking for something that I would never really get. Um, and I always would blame the, the job. Oh, there's a problem with this job or oh, this job will they closed. So I had to move somewhere else or, um, but then I, I, a couple of years ago, I finally figured it out. And I was like, this is a me problem. I, I can't, I can't give what the medical system wants for me. So I'm either going to have to switch careers or I'm going to have to create a job for myself. I'm gonna have to create a business. And so around the same time, Catherine was like, I want you to start learning how to do Botox injections so I don't have to go and spend the money. We can just do it. You, know, you could do it for me. We do Botox parties or something. And I was a weekend course guy and I fell in love. And I said, I can merge my, my artistic and creative side with the science background that I have and really create something beautiful and really impact people and help people. Um, and so I was like, all right, really now I can start doing what I set forth to do back in 2010 when I got my my degree I can actually help people and that's how rediscover aesthetics was born um I mean it wasn't only rediscovering for our patients it was kind of rediscovering for ourselves um rediscovering what medicine can actually look like right and so that's why I'm so excited to grow and expand our services to wellness and the functional medicine aspect of things because there's such a demand for people don't know the system to want quality medical care, right? They want to be optimized. They want to live the best quality of life that they can at 50, 60, 70 years old. They don't want to rely on a reactive medical system that just like you said, Amber, puts you on 20 drugs uh, and half of the drugs are to combat the side effects of the drugs that you're on before. And I mean, everyone's goal too is to look better, to feel better, to, you know, be more energized. And that's just, if that's what you want, and all of those medicines aren't going to help. No, there's a large population of people that don't fall into that category, but they want quality medical care. They want to make sure that they're on the right path for themselves. And I think we're finally in a position to do that for people. And I couldn't be happier with, with where I'm at. And the sky's the limit. I think we're going to, we're really going to help a lot of people with what we're doing. And I love it. A lot of good things coming in 2024 that we won't talk about yet, but it has to do with more wellness um, services versus aesthetic. We'll still have aesthetics. Um, but with art and being more available now, um, we're going to be adding a lot of great new things that will optimize your health. The stuff that like, we're passionate about, like, you know, like yeah. that's just the reason we got into this. And I really think it's going to take off fast and it's going to be good. All right. Rapid fire questions because we're running out of time. All right. Rapid fire questions. Amber, what's your favorite color? Purple. Catherine? Favorite color is blue. My favorite color is also blue. Amber, if you could live or if you could vacation in one place in the entire world, where would you go? Oh, Fiji all day long. Fiji, good one. Oh, I think I might have to do like a Greek island or something like that. That's, okay. that's on the bucket list too. Yeah. Australia and New Zealand for me. 
Oh, no, I don't like spiders and bugs. <laughs> I'll out when they said all that. And that <laughs> nope, wildlife. Um, funniest moment in your entire life? It's hard. Most embarrassing story about yourself? There's a lot. Oh, come on. come on. Rapid fire. Not stories, rapid fire. Oh, geez. Um, Top three things people need to know about you. Like, there we go. Oh, okay. Quick. Um, So, top three things. Mm, my dog is my everything. My puppy. Sorry. Cute dog. Golden doodle. Um, don't have any kids, but I'm best nanny to two little boys. They're six and two. And I will say, I do love my husband most days. <laughs> That's great. Good man. Yeah, he is. Puts up with me. Kevin? All right. Top three things to know about me is, one, um, I'm an introvert. Two, I despise talking on the phone. Nothing will put me in a bad mood faster than having to answer phones and talk on the phones. I'm a texter, so text me. Um, three... Yeah, very organized. Um, I like things to run efficiently and on time. Um, there was something else I was going to say earlier. I get three. And I forgot what, I, what it was. Overachiever. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. I'm not in your head. My top three things, I am left-handed. Um, I used to sing and play guitar in a band in college and high school. And I was a cheerleader for the New Orleans Saints for 20 years. Cool. Those are my three. I'm an extrovert, if you haven't noticed. I mean, a mixed breed. <laughs> Yeah. Depends on what it is. So, anything you want to know about us, burning questions. Oh, we have two dogs, and you probably will see. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're probably seeing them, you know, lay out. And here's one right now. That's, that's Sadie. She's almost 12. She's our OG. And then Marla, oh, wait, see. Marla is our schizophrenic uh, Springer Spaniel poodle mix. Who is just a whore for attention, this sweet little dog. That's her. So, okay. If... uh burning questions or uh comments or anything i'd love to hear them and we'd love to chat about them topic uh, suggestions yeah definitely i i know you guys have questions out there you six people listening i know that there's a burning desire for you to learn something about the medical field or the aesthetics and wellness uh space so please send us some messages we'd love to know info at rediscover aesthetics la or you can just leave a comment down below or send us a message on instagram yeah, we're very heavy Instagram people. So, I mean, see us for a couple. Go see people. Amber dropping truth bombs. That's that'd be the best thing. If you're local to the North Shore area I like or busy. Southeast Louisiana, come have a chat with us. We'd love to answer all your questions and tell you what path that uh, we recommend you to put on to be on. Good job. All right, folks. Merry Christmas. This is the Aesthetic Agenda. Signing off. See you later.